When MasterChef premiered in 2009, few predicted it would turn into a juggernaut. With ratings for the grand final of the MasterChef show expected to reach as many as four million. The show's runaway success propelled its three judges to fame. Break the rules. Push your limits. Palombaris used his newfound celebrity to build an empire, adding two restaurants and a souvlaki chain to his existing press club restaurant. He also scored endorsement and publishing deals. In April 2017, he revealed his company had underpaid nearly 200 restaurant staff by $2.6 million, blaming poor processes. But an investigation by the Fair Work Ombudsman found the problem was much worse, resulting in back payments of more than $7.8 million to 524 current and former staff and a fine of $200,000. There is theft of wages by someone such as George Calambaris, and I think it's deplorable. Then came the news that Calambaris and his fellow MasterChef judges were leaving the show. The widely reported version was that Network 10 refused to agree to significant pay rises on top of their million dollar plus salaries. Now he faces questions about how such a large underpayment could have gone on for so long without his knowledge. George Calambaris, thanks for doing this interview. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What were you thinking? Was I thinking? Um, well, what I do know, I, I, I won't forget that that afternoon in 2017 when uh, we we sat there with my with my new business partners after we had done a full audit of the business and discovered um, the underpayments. It was uh, uh, it was a moment where I'll never forget um, uh, and. Putting that aside for just you know for one second, I think the most important thing that I'm thinking right now is the fact that I I want to apologise to all my my team, both past and present, um, for for the effect that I've had on them, we've had on them. I apologise to them. How did it happen? Um, you know, think about it, sort of. 13 years ago, you're, you're a young chef, 26 years of age, you want to open your first restaurant. You, you, you get together with three other partners at that point um, and you open the first one. Um, uh, then the second one opens, the third one. The creativity's flying, the ideas are flying, the dreaming's there, um, but the sophistication in the back end wasn't there. And, and I'm not here to blame anyone. I take full responsibility. Um, and then philosophically, you get to a point in your life where you go, oh, no, I need to just make some changes. And, you know, uh, three and a bit years ago, I, I, um, I get new business partners. Hang on, let's slow down. Let's look at everything holistically. Let's audit everything. Let's put process in. Like, let's put a CEO in. So you're saying um, before that that there hadn't been enough attention paid to detail and so forth? There was no sophistication in the back end. There was no CEO. There was no people and culture manager. There was no elite finance team like we've got now that um, can make sure the mistake that we made um, never will happen again. I'm sure people would understand that it's busy when you're running a lot of restaurants, as you say, that you're someone who's trained in food, not necessarily business and so forth. But isn't ensuring that your staff is uh, staff are not exploited your most important and basic obligation? They're, they're everything to us. Um, and uh, that's why at that point I was gutted to the point where I'm like, oh my gosh. But then how did it slip through the cracks though? It's exactly that, you know, you're, you're running a million miles an hour, being creative, you know, being, being um, uh, someone that can, you know, inspire the team with the food that you're cooking, with the way we're serving, all that stuff. And you assume that in the back end, uh, things are happening at the same speed, but they weren't. Um, but now we have, uh, a great audit system, in incredible people back a house that can make sure this never happens again. Um, so that both creativity, great restaurants, great service, great food, all connects. 
We know that there's a lot of problems in the industry. Generally, the federal government's now having a look at potentially criminalising some of this stuff. Is it a case that your businesses were just doing what everybody else in this industry does and thinks is normal? Uh, you know, the thing we, I, I need to say is 2017, we found the problem we self-reported. We're the ones that went, hang on, we've made a mistake here. How, you know, like a terrible mistake. We, we went to Fair Work, we owned up. And two years ago, we paid back everyone. It didn't happen last week. The, the, obviously, the investigation finished last week with Fair Work, but we paid our team members back two years ago. Um, uh, I, I could only look at my backyard and uh, I'll never forget the backyard back in 2017. I look at it now and I, I just came from our support office and I look around there and obviously it's, it's, everyone's not up and about at the moment. Everyone's struggling at the moment. Is 2017 when you were first aware that there was a potential problem? In 2015, there was a letter that came to us about some, some, some issues that we needed to fix in terms, of, um, uh, in terms of classifications. I signed that letter, I'll own up to that. Um, and assuming that it would all be fixed, um, that's when in 2017, we discovered that there was a problem here because the systems and processes and procedures that we well, I thought were in play, um, weren't in play. And again, I t I'm not sitting here, or I take full responsibility for this. Just, uh, I'm sorry. Just returning to the point I made about the industry more broadly, is there generally though, in this industry as a whole, a cultural problem around underpayment, overwork and so forth? Uh, look, I don't, I don't wanna talk for the rest of the community, we're all talking about it right now. This happened two years ago, no one was talking about it. We went and said, hey, this is a mistake. Well, yes, we, we need to fix it. Yes, we need to, you know, get slapped for it. And we definitely have, but we also need to now be a voice for change. We're obviously multiple restaurants. There's single restaurants out there that I understand it's hard. They haven't got the opportunity where they can have CEOs and infrastructure, but it doesn't m mean they can do this. They have to seek advice, they need to make sure they're on top of just, just as much the food, the service, um, the great wine, the great dishes. The, at the back it needs to be just as delicious. The average person watching it, watching this interview, um, you know, they hear what you're saying, that there wasn't enough attention paid to detail at the back end um, of it. But then if they look at the reporting that's been out there um, and what Fair Work found where, you know, it was nearly eight, $8 million, the average person watching it might think, that doesn't sound like just not paying enough attention to detail. That sounds like a systematic effort to avoid paying people what they really deserve to get paid. Well, it's, it's, it's called not having the proper infrastructure in the background to make sure that we're there's, the classifications are being checked and done correctly um, to be on top of all this stuff. It's, there's, a, there's a whole myriad of, of stuff that needs to be um, ticked and checked and, and checked and triple checked that weren't being done. Um, you know, I, I, there's, there is no excuse for what I did. It's, there is no excuse. But I, you know, I, I truly believe that we've we owned up, we paid up, and we did that two years ago. Um, and right now, there's there's 642 team members that I I I absolutely adore. Um, we're not closing our restaurants. We're here, and you know it's it's my job as their leader to keep pushing forward and keep speaking this message, um, not shying away from the mistake we made but also acknowledging that we fixed it. And, you know, I, I love these people. Do you think given what's happened that they believe that still? Well, there's 642 of them that are, are here and they're behind me and behind our beliefs and behind made establishment because, you know, it, we stood up and we, we acknowledged that we made a, a big mistake and, and they can see the change, you know, there's team members in here that have been with me for 12 years you know they've seen it since the beginning to now and if if we you know it's action speaking louder than words and you know two and a half three years ago I could have just 
gone, no, nah, this is all too hard and run away. But it's, th these are my people. I need to lead by example. And if anything, I hope the, the rest of the industry sees this and goes, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go and double check and triple check everything in my business, more than just the, uh, the potatoes and the carrots. Can I ask what happened with MasterChef and, and with you and Channel 10 parting ways? Channel 10 suggested that it was because it couldn't meet um, your demands and the other hosts' demands for salary. Is it accurate that you and the other hosts were demanding pay rises of up to 40%? What, what I can say is that the sticking point that we got to with MasterChef and with Channel 10 was simply time. The, the dollars were all signed off, that was all done and dusted. It was time and time for Gary to do more of his own stuff, Matt to do more of his stuff and for me to be in my restaurants more. Um, it takes up a long time, it takes you know sort of six, seven months of our year and we just needed more time and that's all it came down to. Matt Preston said in an interview this week that he learned on the radio that he wasn't going to be re-signed. How did you find out about it? Um, yeah, look, I, obviously my, 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 my management sent me the details within, within minutes of, um, of them finding out. I, you know what it is, I, I'm not upset at anyone or anything. You know, I'm still contracted to Channel 10 and I respect the fact they gave me, uh, Gary and Matt, an I don't want to speak for them, but they gave us that opportunity to, to be on a show that's absolutely changed the world. It takes a long time to build a reputation, in your case, you know, 25 years of work, um, and then you can lose it in a week. Um, what has been the toll of that on you? I love this industry. I really do. And I love um, the, every opportunity that it's given me. I love the people that have worked for me and I, I don't want them to suffer right now. Right now, all I care about is the fact that within a week, you know, um, you know you, restaurants are, uh, great restaurants are voted by bums on seats and obviously don't punish my people. Just know when you come into a, a, one of our restaurants, know when you pay the bill that those, my people are getting paid and paid correctly. Um, I, I love every bit of my industry and I've, I've had an incredible 20 odd years, but I look at this as my next opportunity to demonstrate um, to the rest of my community and to this, this industry that I value so much um, that it can be done right. And we've shown that in the last two years that you can be compliant. You can, you can be compliant. That should just be a minimum and there's a whole lot more work that we're doing within our, our group made establishment uh, that is bigger than just, you know, serving people every day. So what is your immediate plan from here? Lee, I think for me right now, it's, it's a real deep breath. Uh, it's, been, it's been tumultuous, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's been tumultuous for my team, you know, right now, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, I need, I need to be around them. It's super important I'm, I'm around them um, and uh, leading um, uh, and also around my family. That, that's it right now. I'm not really thinking about anything else but those two important things in my life that I love and adore. George Calambaris, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.